Hello? Hi, I sir. Yeah. Uh, we got a big problem in project 4361. What problem? For this project, today we receive a servo motor, but the motor is without the key. You mean sapped key? The motor is supplied without a sapped key? Uh, yeah, but the problem is even bigger. The motor shaft is keyless. What do you mean by keyless? Arre, sir, the motor shaft does not have a key cut, does not have a key sheet. It just completely rounds. How can we lock our sprocket over the motor shaft? Ah, oh, okay, I got it. Okay, let me think. Yeah, it happens sometimes. We are human. Sometimes we make mistakes, blunders. Maybe while ordering up the motor, we may make mistakes in specifying the model number of the motor. For example, here a single digit mistake in this servo motor model number can be result in motor without key slot, a straight shaft without a key, or maybe because of any reason, or maybe intentionally. If we got a motor without a key slot, then what is the solution? How we can transmit the power and motion from a motor shaft without a key, from a motor shaft that have no key slot? Shaft can be motor shaft or any driver shaft or any rotating shaft. So you might say that I use if there is no key slot in motor shaft, then make a simple key slot at your workshop at your end. So no. Because a key cutting or key slotting can potentially damage a motor internal parts. Also, whether motor get damaged or not damaged, but after machining the motor shaft, the warranty of the motor will be voided. So, never try to do the slotting of a motor shaft. The thumb rule is never do any machining over any standard item. A standard item like motor or gearbox or a bearing. A standard item warranty will be voided. So in this video, we are going to explore the actual solution. Solution for transmitting the high power, high torque from a complete round shaft without any key. So there are mainly two solutions. One is select or design a split hub bolt clamping, something like this. And the second is keyless friction locking device, also known as power lock. But this video is not only about selection, designing and working of these two keyless shaft locking options. Later in this video, I will give you four reasons that why these two keyless method are actually better shaft locking method as compared to shaft key locking. We all know that shaft key locking is a simple and cost effective mechanism. And also, no doubt, a shaft key locking can transmit huge torque at high speed. But shaft key locking has some cones, having some disadvantage. And in some cases, we must avoid shaft key locking. Or in some cases, we can't even use key locking. So we will have to use these keyless method, any of these two method. So in this video, we will also conclude that where we should use which type of shaft key locking mechanism. So this video is all about selection of shaft locking method. So our first shaft locking method is a split hub bolt clamping. For example, this coupling has half a split hub bolt clamping. And its working principle is very simple. First we lose the clamping bolts and place this coupling hub over the shaft. And then start tightening this bolt and as we tightening the bolt, because there is this hub is splitted, so this enough gap is for the contraction. So this hub will start stretching its shape and clamps the shaft circumference surface from all around. And this hub clamping build a high rigid frictional lock. Because the clamping effective area is this complete cylindrical surface between the shaft and hub. Now, if you want to design this clamping by your own, maybe for a sprocket or any rotating mechanism, like for a timing pulley or a V pulley. So here I want to give you some design guidance as per my own experience. So now, to design this integrated clamp, 
The first requirement is this sprocket or timing pulley should have a, this extra length of hub for the clamping mechanism. Now, first cut this extra hub at least half something like this. And now, if the hub is made of aluminium or any soft metal, a simple half split cut is enough, something like this. Because the alloys like aluminiums are flexible to stretch or bend its shape around the shaft. And the width of this split cut, 1 to 1 1.5 mm is good enough. Now, also keep in mind that the outer diameter of this hub should be large enough so that we can make a counter hole at one side and a threaded hole at another side. And then put a socket head cap screw bolt, something like this. Also, if the hub is long enough, then you can add one more bolt to further increase the clamping strength if required. And now, if the hub is made of steel, then this half split cut will be difficult to stretch and clamp with a bolt. Maybe we will have to use a bigger size bolt and high bolt tightening torque would be required. Otherwise, the hub will be not bent and clamped sapped from all around. So in this case, to make this clamping sufficiently flexible to work, we can add a little cut on the hub on opposite side also, something like this. Or better if we can completely split this hub in separate part. And bolt it at both sides, something like this. So this was all about the split hub bolt clamping method and the second keyless locking method is keyless friction locking device also known as power lock also known as mecha lock also known as friction fastener and some other name also different manufacturer mention it's by different name so don't be confused the all names means the same now this is a complete separate device and you don't need to do any extra machining or modification over either hub or the shaft. You just have to place this device between the shaft and hub. And then tightening this bolt up to its predetermined tightening torque. And the shaft and hub will be locked with a strong and secure connection. And as this is a standard item, so we can check its shaft locking capacity. Like here, for 30 mm sap, the locking capacity is 1110 Nm. For sap diameter 40 mm, locking capacity is 2070 Nm. Definitely, this is too much sufficient for a general application. So, how this works? How this creates as much resistance? So, this comes in mainly two designs. Double taper type and single taper type. In double taper type, there are two taper rings, let's say A and B, and two splitted taper rings. One for clamping the hub and one for clamping the shaft. And now, by tightening these locking bolts, these taper rings A and B approaches each other. So it pushes the both ring. The hub rings clamps the hub complete surface and sap ring clamps the sapped complete surface with a high contact pressure and the contact pressure generates a frictional force that completely lock the hub and the sapped. I hope you understood very well. And now in single taper type there are only two taper rings. One is for clamping the hub and one is for clamping the sapped. And by tightening this locking nut the hub ring moves while sliding on shaft inner ring taper surface and inner surface of the hub, something like this. And at this time, the radial force pressing the shaft and the inner surface of the hub against each other. This pressure is generated by this wedge effect and this radial force generates a frictional force that strongly lock the shaft and the hub. I hope it's clear to you. And there are also some design variations in single taper type keyless locking. 
One is single nut design, something like this. Second is this flange mounting type. We can screw this part directly on the hub, so it takes less space. Best suitable for a small difference between the ID and OD. Third is this compact type lock. Same as a standard single taper lock, also provides centering function. Yes, these single taper type locks provide centering function. So you do not need to provide a guide on shaft and hub during the assembly. So now, how we should install this key lock? So first check and ensure the machining requirement. And if the machining requirement is fulfilled, then go for the preparation and then tightening. So the first requirement is the shaft and hub size should be under a specified tolerance. In general, the shaft should be in H8 or G6 and the hub should be maintained in H7 or H8. For more detail, you can check the manufacturer catalog. Second, the surface finish should be around RA1.6 for better frictional lock. And now we can start the preparation. And the first step is wipe off the shaft and hub surface and apply some oil or grease. Also wipe off and apply oil and grease on the contact surface of the frictional locking device, its hub and shaft seat, and then temporarily locate the locking device into the hub, and then insert the shaft into this locking device. And here, please do not tighten the bolt of the locking device before inserting the shaft. And now we can go for the bolt tightening. And for the bolt tightening, use the torque wrench. So after locating, tighten the lock bolts using a torque wrench in a diagonal line order. Beginning lightly, approx one fourth of the predetermined tightening torque. And then tighten the bolt further to increase the torque at approximately half of a specified torque. And then tighten with the predetermined tightening torque. And finally, tighten the locking bolts in circumferential order. And this is all because we want the sap to be get placed into the center of the hub. And now let's see that how these keyless locking methods are better sap locking option as compared to key locking. So the first and foremost advantage of keyless locking method is zero backless. There is no clearance and no backless in both keyless method. Whereas in key locking, zero backless is not possible. There will be always a backless. Because of repetitive motion, the key get loose and create a clearance in the key seat. So if the application is subjected to certain start, certain stop, acceleration, deacceleration, also where we cannot tolerate any backless, the motion is too much precise, then always go for the keyless locking option. And now the second advantage of keyless friction locking device is higher torque density as compared to key locking. This means that a standard keyway in a sap typically reduce the shaft radius by 20 to 25 percent and often by 50 percent. Therefore, a large diameter should be selected to ensure the shaft will be able to withstand the full torque of the application, especially when vast majority of the torsional stress is applied to outer 40 percent of the shaft material. Whereas in keyless frictional locking device, no key cut is required. So we don't have to go for the large diameter shaft, means keyless friction locking device having the high torque density. Now, the third advantage of keyless locking device is free phase adjustment. What does mean is, let's say, if I have to maintain the angular position of the shaft, then I have to be carefully maintain the angular position of this key precisely with respect to the mechanism connected with this shaft. Because the position of this shaft are fixed with respect to the pulley with these keys. Whereas in keyless friction locking devices, we can adjust any angle, allowing complete phase adjustment. We just have to loosen the bolt. So always prefer keyless locking devices in this case instead of key locking. 
The fourth advantage of keyless locking option is the dynamic balancing. What this mean is let's say if this large timing pulley is made of aluminium but the key we cannot make key in aluminium because the key will quickly damage. So it has to be a steel and because the steel have a higher mass density than aluminium means this key is adding an unbalanced mass and in many applications a tiny unbalanced mass can create high vibrations. So if the pulley and shaft are not made of same material always avoid key locking go for the keyless locking device. And there are also some other benefits of the key locking device like easy to assemble and disassemble. Keyless locking device also can take thrust load. We can check the thrust capacity in manufacturer catalog. So we can directly use it in for example in induction table. Whereas a key locking can cannot take thrust load of course. So there are many benefits of keyless locking devices, keyless locking options. So should we always use keyless locking devices, keyless locking options? So no, it all depends on situations. Because the keyless locking devices are more expensive, much more expensive than a simple key locking method. A split hub clamping mechanism is also little more expensive than simple key locking. Simple key lock mechanism is very economical. So in general applications where backless is not a concern, balancing is not a concern, quick assembly and disassembly not a concern, then always go for the key locking option. Now just for side note, there are also some alternative to the key locking like simple screw locking which are can be used for low torque DIY applications. But for industrial machine design, these options are not acceptable. And this is it for this video. This was a complete different topics, but I believe as much you see the different type of mechanism, understand different type of mechanisms, your design decision making capacity, the range, the options improves. So always try to deeply understand different types of mechanisms that how physics works. And I hope you found this video useful. So please give us a like and not just like also do subscribe. And thank you so much for doing this.